Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Kareem Clemens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me right here, right now. This right here is Kareem in the morning. Okay, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Kareem Clemens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me right here, right now. Thank those who are here. Thank those who are on their way. Uh, we are on another episode of Kareem in the Morning. Now, before I continue, I want to say thank you to all those who uh, tuned in to uh, the first episode of Kareem in the Morning starting for 2022. And I want to say thank you guys so much for those views. Uh, I do have some corrections. Uh, do I have questions? I just want to have uh, updates. I have some updates on some of the stories I had talked about. However, I'm just going to go ahead and um, give it to you guys like this. So I received some DMs and uh, messages explaining to me, hey, Kareem, you know, your videos is cool. I love your videos. Uh, if you could do us a favor, like try to like minimize the time. So uh, instead of going for like hours and hours and just blabbing and blabbing and blabbing i did have a um like a method to how i'm going to do it now moving forward so what's going to happen is here on cream in the morning i'm not going to have no topics i'm not going to have no topics because i noticed that when i speak on those topics i spend a lot of time on those topics and i didn't really get to all the topics that i wanted to talk about so what I'm going to do moving forward, I'm just going to go ahead, since it's cream in the morning, it's, uh, there's news always trending and always changing, okay, and breaking news is always occurring. I'm just going to go ahead and just go to the scoop, see what, what's there, and just give it to you right here, raw and unfiltered, okay, and including my opinion. But before I continue to move on, let me just go ahead and get these uh disclaimers out there so you guys can be aware. This channel and these videos are not meant for children under the age of 13. And the Omega Studio News Talk Show Tea and also of course Cream in the Morning and all the other platforms, you must be over the age of 18. And get into the disclaimer. Okay. Now that we have covered that, I just want to go ahead and talk to you guys about this. If you guys have not heard already, um, well, I don't think you guys even heard about this. Well, yeah, no, let me scratch that. You guys did hear about this, but it's it's been like old news. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it back up with On This Day in History. Okay? So if you guys remember okay you guys remember let me just go ahead and and pull this up if you guys remember that the world was watching in 1995 in october okay in october of 1995 they say an estimated of 140 million america americans watched and listened on television as the verdict was read and delivered in the infamous O.J. Simpson trial, okay? They have come back with a not guilty verdict. I mean, even me, I was like, oh my God. I was like in the kitchen at the house in Jersey City. And I was like, wow, they found him not guilty. Like the whole world was watching because we already know uh, what he was charged with. And then we also know that at, at the end, you know, he went on this high speed chase where the police was chasing after him and his Bronco truck. And then he gave himself up and then he went to trial and then everybody was watching. Okay. So yes, on this day in history in 1995, uh, in October, they found him not guilty. But two years later, in 1997, we are now reading an archive that Simpson, O.J. Simpson, was found liable for several charges related to the murder, and a civil charge was forced to award $33.5 million 
uh, and punity damages to the victims and families. So, you know, a lot of people was like, how OJ Simpson is going to get this money? OJ Simpson's like, how the hell are you going to get this money? And everybody else is like, well, how are you going to get this money? And then if we all recall, a couple of years later, in the 2000s, 2007, OJ Simpson ran into some legal problems where it had first uh, appeared in social media that he allegedly, but he was found guilty of it, went up into a hotel room to go get his property back and all hell broke loose. So let's go ahead and hear about this. So yeah, so in 2007, Simpson ran into some legal problems once again when he was arrested for breaking into a Las Vegas hotel room and taking sports uh, property, which he claimed had been stolen from him at gunpoint. But on October 3rd, yet again, the same uh, time in 1995 when he was found not guilty, okay, October 3rd, October 3rd, 2008, he was found guilty. Now, I don't know if this is like, a, um, you know, just, I'm not going to say fate, but it's just, it happened like that. So, and it's in the archives like that. So, you know, this guy was found guilty of 12 charges. You know, I always, when I'm on YouTube, sometimes when I want to bring up like old videos and I want to go look at these videos, sometimes I go look at that video and I look at OJ Simpson's face and I look at the judge's face. And when I see the judge's face, it's like that judge, the way she was like proceeding over that case, you guys go up there and you guys look at the video. Matter of fact, I'm going to put the video in the link description below on his sentencing when he was sentenced in that uh, Las Vegas uh, incident. When you guys look at the judge, oh my God. When you see the judge's face, before she took a sip of her beverage, okay, she proceeded to sentence O.J. Simpson. And you just look at her face, body language, face expression, her tone, her voice. It just seems like she had a personal vendetta against him. Like they was just, I don't know, maybe she was upset because of because he was found not guilty in 95 and then later later on. Down the line, on October 3rd, 2008, some years later, you know, you wasn't acquitted. You're not going to be acquitted now. You was acquitted then, but here you're not going to be acquitted now, okay? You're going to be found guilty, and that's exactly what happened. He was found guilty of 12 charges related to the incident, including armed robbery, kidnap, and he was sentenced to 33 years in prison. Now... It just seems like October is the best of the best for O.J. Simpson, good and bad, okay? Let me just go ahead and, um, hold on, hold on. Good and bad. Okay, good and bad. For number one, because I just realized this too, let me just go ahead and bring this up. I just realized this too. Good and bad. So he was released on parole in October 1st, 2017, right? Hold on, get into this. 2017, right? And we all know that he was um he was uh represented by Johnny Cochran, who died. Well, get into this, guys. Johnny Cochran just had a birthday on October the 2nd, okay? And it's like he was sentenced on October the, the 3rd, released on October the 1st, and filed acquitted on October the 3rd, 1995. Everything's in October. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But I do know that I do follow OJ Simpson on Twitter, and I do know that OJ Simpson is in Florida. I don't know what his his status is right now as far as like what's going on because we do know that the hurricane and all this other stuff has taken place down in Florida. 
So I don't know. I really hope that he's okay and that he uh, is safe along with everybody else because that's a catastrophic event through Mother Nature. So we pray for them. But we do know that everything was in October and he's there. So if you guys want to look at this case in the video, I'm going to have it in the description below. All right. So I just wanted to bring that up on this day in history right here, right now. Okay, so uh, let me just go ahead and give you guys some updates on the story that I had uh, talked about. I did talk about on the last episode of Coolio's death and how uh, the rapper mysteriously just died at the age of 59, which to me is young. But, you know, I am now or I have received some information after that story had uh, uh, went out about Coolio. And somebody has sent me some information talking about allegedly, allegedly, okay, that, uh, and, 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 you know, I'm just going to say this because, you know, everything is allegedly in these cases, but my thing is this, I've far too, uh, far too seen, I've, I've, far too seen, I've seen far, far too many stories where you hear about a rapper and if they wasn't assassinated, okay, if they wasn't assassinated, because again, just the recent rapper PN, PNB Rock, uh, who was assassinated in uh, Chicken and Waffles in Los Angeles, and prior to him, you know, Nipsey Hussle and, you know, uh, all, all everybody else, um, Young Dolph and everybody. Uh, my thing is this, when we hear about the OG rappers and we hear about them, they, they tend to uh, put stories and archives okay and i'm going to link that story in the description below they uh tend to uh say put in archives when i say put in archives i'm talking about their sit down with people on their uh their their uh platform and their talk you know and answer some questions that the host may ask 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 them okay and there was a video that has surfaced where coolio the late coolio okay, uh, was the late rapper Coolio, was into being interviewed and was talking. And, and I was listening to this video. And I was listening to the words that he was saying. And in these words that he was saying, it just seems like, to me, it just seems like, um, I'm not really sure if he knew he was going to die. But some of the words that he was saying was, you know, he's not afraid to die, okay? He don't want nobody to come and mess with him. He want people to leave him and his family alone, okay? So according to what someone sent me, they were saying that uh, the rapper, uh, the late rapper Coolio possibly could have been murdered, allegedly. I'm just saying. So why do they think that, Kareem? Well, they're telling me, and what I'm reading from social media is that, and, 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 and what I've seen and heard, listen, on the video that he said from out of his own mouth about how, you know, so many people were uh, trying to call him and he didn't know if it was like robocalls or uh, bill collectors or, you know, it was just that so many people was agging him. And he said that he had so many text messages and calls and 
I mean, I've never heard of a robocall text messaging me. But then again, yeah, Kareem, uh, I've received text messages out of the yin yang and I didn't know where it was from and I had to block them. So I, I know what he's, I know uh, when, what he's talking about when he's talking about those text messages. But when you have calls, people will call you and they uh, are trying to get information on you to try to see where you're at. I don't know if these are bill collectors. I don't have bill collectors. I don't have bills. Okay, that's overdue. Okay, my bills are always paid in an advance. Okay, so I don't have to get to that situation where I have to worry about them when the time comes. Okay, so in his case, you know, he stated that people were calling him and he had more calls from, you know, these unwanted people more than his family. Okay. So, yeah, so somebody has sent me this information and they were saying that the 59 year old uh, death was like mysteriously. And they, they said that the only reason uh, or the only way that they know the cause of death is when the autopsy comes back. But social media is saying that if, if it, it, it's possible allegedly that the late rapper was going to expose some people. Now, I don't know what that means in the rap industry, but apparently it must mean something, danger, because, and look at you, Kareem, talking about this. I know, right? I don't really talk about stories like this, but normally, you know, this is Kareem in the morning, so, hey, whatever. Uh, so, uh, but it's my opinion. So it is what it is. Apparently, in this video, he talked about, so it's an interview clip with Coolio uh, seemingly predicting his own death. And I believe that, uh, let me see. Yeah, that video is online too. The video is online too. So here, so let me just go ahead and read this over. So Coolio suggested that he may have information of possibly criminal, possibly criminal activity among high level executives in the entertainment industry that he wants to expose. And less than a month after Coolio expressed his intent to expose those individuals, he was found dead in his Los Angeles home. Well, well, at first they said a friend's house, a friend's house, but then now they're saying that it's his home. So yes, so I don't know. I don't know what it means to expose someone in the entertainment industry because I don't know none of those people. I don't know none of them, never met them. Uh, however, if anything, I would say that my opinion right here on the Kareem in the morning, just keep your mouth closed. But then some people say, a closed mouth won't get fed. That's what they say. But then there's a time where you just have to close your mouth and not say anything because those words and can come back and bite you in the ass. Isn't that an expression? Right. They can come back, back and bite you in the ass. And in this case, we don't know. We will have to just wait until the toxicology report come back and his autopsy report come back stating whether or not he had anything in his system or it was just a natural cause death okay because i'm just saying it's just i i just compare him to dmx and all the other young rappers who just mysteriously died at a young age and it's like oh oh my god i can't believe it but you know we never know the time or the hour you know god will call us home from labor to reward at any given time any given day Okay, we just have to be ready when he comes. Okay, so when they uh, give funeral arrangements out for the late rapper, I will bring that breaking news right here on Cream in the morning. Okay, so moving right along. So this next story that I want to um, talk about real quick, and it's going to be the last one I talk about before I go ahead and end this cream in the morning right here. 
Now, I have brought up the topic on my on episode one about the Netflix removing the LGBTQIA tag from the series, uh, the 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 uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer series that's on Netflix. Now, I am hearing some disturbing. I'm not hearing. I'm reading. Well, I did hear it at one point about uh, about people going on social media, right? Going on social media saying that uh, people are obsessed. They are obsessed with the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not obsessed, but lusting after the movie. And they say it in particularly, allegedly, the LGBT QIA black men. That's what they're saying. So my thing is this. We already know the damn story about what this man did back then. Okay? This man was killing African American people and young people, young ages, young people. And what he did was he enticed these people with the promise of money and smokes and beer to come back to his house, oh, to photograph them. And then once when he brings them back to his place, he would douse their drink with a concoction that will ultimately put them unconscious. And then he would turn around and strangle them and kill them. And then he would decapitate them, keep and harvest their body parts, and then eat them. So I don't understand why anybody whether or not you are the LGBTQIA, anybody would lust or feel some type of emotion from that in a good and sexual way. I don't understand. I don't understand that. So I'm seeing all these comments that people are saying on social media about this, and it's just horrible. It's disgusting. I'm not going to even repeat none of this, but it's just disgusting. Like, what he looked like then is not what he would have looked like today. The man is dead, okay? He's in a spot where he belongs, okay? So my thing is that you shouldn't be lusting over what this person did to African-American people. Look at all these people who are right now doing this, and they're not even caught. But they're doing it far in a most heinous way, in a disgusting way, more than what he did back in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. So stop lusting after this murderer. It's disgusting. And I want to also uh, put this in archives. I'm also hearing that the Jeffrey Dahmer, I don't even want to like saying his name, but However, his uh, prison-worn glasses goes on sale for $150,000? Lord have mercy. $150,000. Now, here, it says the eyeglasses that the serial killer wore in prison is going up for sale for $150,000. So you guys preserve this moron, this murderer glasses, and you're going to sell it for $150,000 to what he did to these people? Are you serious? I'm lost for words. I am lost for words. It doesn't matter whether or not, uh, you know, he's alive or dead. But come on now, y'all preserve this man's glasses, his glasses that he wore in jail, and now you're going to sell it for $150,000? Are you crazy? Give me those glasses, I'm going to stomp them and crush them. Matter of fact, no, Kareem, you don't want to stomp them and crush them. How about we sell the glasses and then... If anything, we divide that 150K to the victims and families that he destroyed. 
and if they're alive, we give it to them. A hundred and fifty K. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to come. This is an ending to Kareem in the morning. Uh, I do want to say to my people over there on Kareem Clemens YouTube Gaming, I did not forget about you guys. What's happening is I'm trying to work with the other people to see what we're going to do with the group page and how we're going to turn it from one thing to another. So just bear with me, be patient, and I'll see you guys in the next video. For more information, you guys can visit the blog page. Have a good one. Later.